Well, hi there, Net. I see you were able to get in. That's great. So that uh, passcode worked for you. Thank you for being here. And you're you're muted right now, so we've got more people that are going to be uh, joining us. So it's it's fine if you want to be muted. Hi, Wendy. Oh, hi there, Debbie. It's so great to see you. How are hi. you? Big, big, big congratulations. Oh, thank you. I so appreciate it. I, I was so wrapped. It took a little while to read it, but it was it's very, not... very engrossing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Well, thank you. Thank you for taking the time and for your support and interest. It's just so, so appreciated. <laughs> yeah, and I just want to tell you, it, it's nine o'clock where I am, so I I. I Came on, just wanted to say hi. Really can't stay, but understand. Just, understand. Uh, yeah, yeah. I had to take take the opportunity to to thank oh. you for letting me have that advance read and and to get it. And uh it's just an amazing, amazing piece of work. <laughs> well, thank you. I so appreciate that you took the time to read it and, and posted the review. And I, I totally get it. With the different time zones, it's tricky. I had uh, one uh, gentleman who was planning to join us. And he's like, but wait a minute. I have to get up at 3 in the morning. So <laughs> you know, 9 o'clock Eastern is not going to be working for him either. So <laughs> I totally get it. <laughs> it. It gets to be this time of day. I I. You know, I'm awake, but I'm slow. Right, <laughs> right. Appropriately uh, winding down. So, and I look forward to uh, getting to uh, be on your wonderful uh, program and to just get to dive into it. And, and oh, talk yeah, about it. I've but, got tons of questions. My, my challenge is going to be to whittle whittle my, my questions down because I could probably have like five hours worth of questions. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's why that's why you're a great great host to those uh curious curious minds all the all the wonderful questions yes. Well, I thank I thank you for that I appreciate that and I'm looking forward to it I really am. Nice okay. To well, thank you but, thank you yeah. so much for being here and I totally understand anytime you need to to drop off that's absolutely. Yeah, I kind of have I kind of have to now it there's this you know other stuff going on too. So. Yep. Yep, understand. Well, thank you. Thank you for taking the time to be here. I appreciate you so much, Debbie. Much, much, much success. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye. Now, Net, where are you uh, located? You are welcome to uh, use use the chat if the chat is easier. Uh, what country are you in or what, what area are you in? I'm actually in um, Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Oh, okay. Oh, very good. So not that not that far away from me. So I'm in a eastern Eastern Washington State. So I'm in the Pacific uh, Northwest part of the U.S. So great. That is awesome. Great. And I've actually um, I've actually um, been to Calgary once. So uh, just did did a road trip and and um, went through there. That was one of our one of our uh, points. And also um, went to uh, Lake Louise. And oh yes, I'm, I'm trying to think of what else. Lake Louise was just amazing with that. Just that just the color to the water was. I know, right? <laughs> I yeah I, I that's so it's beautiful like green it's yes. amazing yeah yes exactly exactly mm -hmm. so very very cool well do you have any questions or anything I can be helping you with while uh, everyone else uh, <laughs> get themselves here I know it's always a busy busy time of day depending on where people are living yes yes exactly well I've actually been um the the I somehow landed on, um, what was it, Life, I saw you on there too, um, what's it called, uh, oh, Alex's show, um, Next Evil Soul, Alex yes, Fantasy. yes, I saw you on there, and yes. then, um, and then I saw you again on, just a short, it was just you talking, 
Um, so you weren't actually speaking to anybody. Okay. Um, so you were just telling your story and, okay. um, uh, so, and then I went to your website. Um, but, uh, the first one that I saw on there was, uh, Virginia Drake. Okay. Do you, do you know who she is? Uh, the name rings a bell, but I'm not quite placing her at the moment. She, um, they call her the cat lady because she's died like nine times oh and she's from Kentucky. Okay. And I think she drowned twice, oh my but goodness. the major thing was a heart attack, but um, she's always had, I guess, this ability, um, uh, gift, so to speak. Her mom was afraid of it. But uh, she's got like, she's 70 years old now. And so this all happened to her a long time ago. And, and she spent, I believe it was 18 days with Jesus. But the first time I heard her speak, she was talking about how um, spirit comes to you as in whatever you, um, uh, whatever your beliefs are, right? So right believe in Muhammad or you believe in nothing, then that's what you get. Right. So, or, you know what I mean? Like if you're a Christian, you right. believe in Jesus or, you know, so, and that really made sense to me. Mm -hmm. Right. So, um, thoughts create our reality and mm -hmm. find that's true in most of the cases. Occasionally I find people uh, during their session, during their healing session with me, someone will come through that's an ascended master um, or guru, and it's outside of their cultural reference. Right. That's really interesting when that, when that happens. Like, like, like the native Indian. Yes. Like it might be native Americans or yeah. people, you know, white calf, Buffalo woman, or it might be um, sometimes Ganesh comes through who's considered a Hindu God um, or, or Lakshmi um, just, you know, well known um, to people in, in India, but it, you know, just that's who can, that's who can come through or people who are just, you know, not familiar with Jesus because perhaps they're Muslim or, you know, whatever, mm -hmm. whatever else. It's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's very cool. Um, so, uh, anyways, I had, uh, listened to her story and then, um, I listened to her, uh, I found a few more of hers. And so, and then I found it was the same, she was saying the same things, but, but there were little tidbits where, um, she would say, oh, and, 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 in, like she would just throw in other things that she would remember right so okay. anyways um then um then I started listening to more and more of them and um I found very similar you know all across the board that you know except for little details you know um yeah it's it's funny throughout yeah death experiences mm-hmm but yeah, we'll get exactly what they need too. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. and, but it, it is so in what, like you said, um, our thoughts, right. And our beliefs. So it is our belief system that, you know, and, and that's why you have to have great beliefs and, and you have to keep a great attitude, which is so hard, but, right. um, right. yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. I just want to say, uh, yeah, that's a great point, Nat. I just want to say hi to Marjorie. Marjorie, yeah. so wonderful uh, to have you here. And I know you're another East Coaster staying up late. <laughs> so thank you for being here. And thank you for your amazing support for me uh, all these all these years. I so appreciate you. And so appreciate that you just jumped into this book and, and uh, posted a review. And I just really appreciate it. And Marjorie, you're muted, which uh, you may may or may not know. And you're welcome to uh, put a comment um, in the chat if if chatting is easier versus um, versus talking. So whatever whatever's good for you, <laughs> or you can just be our silent friend here too. Um, but as more people uh, join us, I will uh, jump into uh, some of the background uh, with this book and happy to uh, answer answer questions. It just was pretty astonishing uh, to go through the process of having just more and more and more um, come out because you can you can tell um, if you've if you've 
uh, read the book, or if you haven't, let me just explain kind of the premise of it. So what happened, uh, Nick, because you may not know the, the backstory, is I had significant experiences that were going on for about a year or more with um, with a gentleman that I, I suspected was Joe DiMaggio, but I didn't want to deal with it because it's like, oh my goodness, a famous person, what am I going to do with this? <laughs> so, but just so much happened. And then finally, my spiritual teacher uh, texted me and got straight to the point and said, Joe wants to talk with you. <laughs> I was like, oh boy. I was, oh my way, gosh. <laughs> it was kind of like, you know, being called to the principal's <clears throat> office. And it's like, oh, yeah. oh boy, oh boy. And so I meditated and just had this really profound conversation with him for about a half an hour. And he explained um, about that timeline to me and the work that I needed to do and what I needed to heal and release from it. And so I, I uh, texted right back to my uh, spiritual teacher and said, okay, I have it straight now. I know who I was in that timeline. So that's, that's how the book starts. But because our ego can just get in the way, and particularly when we're exploring a lifetime that's historic or famous or infamous or yeah, biblical, yeah. it's just, it's just a lot to take in. So um, I decided to have um, a past life regression of my own. And uh, that's what I did. And I did not tell the past life regressionist what was happening for me because I didn't want her to have any bias either. Well. <laughs> it just was it just was profound. So I went back to his childhood and all this information um, and all this uh, amazing energy just started flowing to be able to heal uh, that lifetime. And then it just got more extraordinary from there because I had a woman referred to me for me to do the past life regression. So the book goes back and forth and there's many sessions, many healing sessions, past life regression sessions of mine where, where Joe just more and more of that lifetime kept coming through but I then had a client referred to me who had significant memories dating back to childhood um, that were Marilyn Monroe memories. So, and we recognized each other from that lifetime. And Ow. my belief is that that can just come up if there's a lesson that wasn't completed between two individuals. I mean, that's what I see karma as being about because karma, I don't see it as punishment. I see it as unbalanced energy. I see it as something to help us. And it's like, it's like a, like a, a like a, like a place um, maker has been put in place for us to remember something and to be able to get back to either the same person or the same place or there's something's triggering our memory that we need to finish something up we need to wrap up a lesson we need to complete a lesson and joe and marilyn uh bottom line uh they needed to forgive one another specifically she needed to forgive him for some really regrettable uh, incidents during their short marriage that led to their divorce that just really hurt her. And she just couldn't let them go and couldn't, couldn't um, get, get over it um, because he, he regrettably struck her. Mm. So, um, and that just was so uh, triggering to her understandably, because it took her back to childhood. And also she and Joe had such a, a deep, complex relationship. They'd been friends for years. They were married. They were divorced. Then they were friends again. Then they were planning to marry again um, when she died. So again, it was like a like a pin got stuck in that point in time of when she died. And they literally, he ended up burying her on their wedding day. And that just caused such anger oh, for him, for my soul. And that just caused such 
heartbreak. So he never, he never released it. He lived another uh, 40 or so years after her death. And he never, he never had another uh, romantic relationship um, because he just was so uh, traumatized by that and was just so, so done. Um, and then that had a lot of uh, mirror reflection for me, um, as well as uh, other things that came up, um, came up for me. And that's what I think is so fantastic when you can have past life regression therapy, when you can have past life healing, and you can let go of these energies that are impacting us in the future. Um, and it was particularly uh, profound for me uh, with Joe DiMaggio, because we were parallel lives for about 40 years. So again, that was another reason. And, and uh, Margie, you called that out and said, oh boy, <laughs> people are going to have questions about that. <laughs> because a lot of people don't understand the concept of parallel lives and that our higher self has so much energy and can choose to incarnate into multiple lifetimes at the same time. And for the purpose of, of just learning more and just progressing more quickly, and typically you choose very different lives, which Joe and I certainly had uh, incredibly different lives. I mean, here he is a male and, you know, grew up on the West Coast, but spent a lot of time in, in New York City and was a professional athlete and became so well known. And, you know, here's me, the least athletic person on the face of the planet. <laughs> And, and a woman, um, and we were, you know, born in different countries, because I was born in, in Canada, and just, you know, such different, different um, experiences, but there just was um, so much um, energy overlap between us. And then uh, another thing that can happen during past life regressions that's so amazing is you can physically heal as well as emotionally heal. Uh, that past life energy that's not that's not serving you so i got tremendous physical healings during this series of sessions that i did where um joe just kept coming up and more and more and more about his his life um and it just got so well rounded um because i saw uh, six or eight uh, different <laughs> past life regressionists. Because after I'd have this session, I'd be I'd be great with it for a while, and then my ego would just get triggered and go, "Who the heck do you think you are? Come on, <laughs> Joe DiMaggio, he's so well known, uh, particularly to um, Americans, and really was considered an American hero. You know, it wasn't just his his baseball." Uh, um, all the all the records that he set there but it was he volunteered to serve in world war ii and and just you know he did so much uh beautiful uh fundraising and philanthropy for um uh, the children's hospital uh, that he became the the sponsor for um so i'll just i'll just uh, stop there and let me just check real quickly if there's any people uh texting me saying they can't get in uh because sometimes things get uh, persnickety with with um yeah because i need that meet, uh, meeting id and i couldn't find it and then okay. um so i went in and booked again and okay. then it sent me the link for zoom and i clicked on okay. that perfect so i do have <laughs> another person who can't get in so let me just uh get her in real quick here and give her this this meeting room so let me do this very carefully without disconnecting us. <laughs> oh my goodness. Cause you go like, you go so into your right brain and you go so up and it's like, wait, now I have to do something with my left brain. Oh, <laughs> okay. right, let me just answer Sharon real quickly here. I can do this. I have two parts to my brain. There we go. Okay, very good. Perfect. All right. And let me just check my text real quickly here. I'm sorry to be uh, inattentive. Okay, there we go. All right. So, and Margie, I can't, I can't hear you. 
Um, yeah, I'm I'm sorry. So yeah, you're muted. If you want to, you can type anything in chat. If there's anything you want to uh, comment there down in the middle of the screen, do you know how to use chat? If you look, if you put your cursor over the middle bottom, there's a little box called chat and you can type in a comment there if you want to say anything there. Since your um, uh, microphone is not uh, being cooperative. <laughs> so goodness, we have such technology tonight, my goodness. And hopefully uh, Sharon will join us in a minute and uh, some other folks that were planning to be here. And if they're not able to make it, uh, so be it. That's just that's just the way it is. But right. just to let you know, uh, Net, the book is available uh, for just 99 cents uh, today um, and the next for three days, today, tomorrow, and the next day. So I put that link in chat. Are you able to see that, uh, Net, in case that's of interest oh. to you? Does yes. that go to you in chat? Okay. Um, yeah. That's for Kindle? On Kindle, exactly. Yeah, I don't have a Kindle. You don't have a Kindle? There's a no. Kindle reader, and you can just read it on your computer screen. So you don't mm. have a physical uh, Kindle device. So it, it's still, oh, okay. still an option. So, you know what I love? What's is, that? Um, audiobooks on uh -huh. YouTube, and uh -huh. then I can turn on the closed captioning because I'm, if I can see the words, like it helps me focus sure. to, in to more, it, you know, and read it. And yeah. I'm, I'm recording the audio book uh, right now. Oh, so, yay. <laughs> so thank you for uh, bringing that up. So yes, so that's in that's in process right now. And yeah. I mean, a wonderful. Uh, cool. You said it was 600 pages long? It's long. Yeah. <laughs> it's long. It was, it was, um, I've been writing it on and off for the past uh, eight years. And it's been on the back burner for about two uh. years. And then just recently, um, it just really came through that it was uh, time to uh, time to finish it up. And then it was just like, boom, boom, boom. It came through very, uh, very quickly. So, oh, wonderful. Um, I see uh, Sharon is here. So great. Yay. <laughs> so Sharon, you are muted. I'm so glad you um, are here. And thank you for uh, joining us. And Sharon also just published her first new book this past Friday. And I didn't know she was writing a book. She didn't know I was writing a book. And how neat that we like bookended the weekend with her book coming out on Friday and mine on Monday. Mm -hmm. so, um, just very cool. And Sharon, you're welcome to share oh, here, yeah. your book and, and talk about it a little bit. I don't know what to tell you. I'm just telling you I'm still here. I think Sharon had some background noise, so it looks like she's she's back on mute. Anyway, um, if she's able to uh, come back on and, and, and chat with us about that a little bit. So, all right. Well, uh, Net, um, any questions? Do you have any questions about soulmates? Do you have any? Yes. <laughs> okay. I was writing out my questions actually for, because uh, I was listening to this other lady and she said, um, just, you know, like it doesn't have to be a big fluffy thing. She said, you know, I just, it feel felt like my couch was the spot and I would just have to be there and they would come. And she said, all you have to do is invite them in, so to speak, right? Like, you know, to be, and so, I don't know, and that's- A soulmate or a higher self or guide or anything? Yeah, oh, sorry, um, uh, guides, like your Got guides it. or your, yes. yeah. And she was, um, and I, I think I've heard others say it too, that you have a guardian angel, you have, yes. um, 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 what are the other ones called? Um, that that it can help you but you have to yes. you have to ask them <laughs> yes that's exactly right yes we we live in a, a world where there's free will so and guides and and guardian angels and higher self i mean they can't help us unless we ask for help because yes if you know if we just want to do everything the solo cowboy way you know that's a choice too 
and we'll certainly learn from it. It'll be instructive, but it's a choice if we want to uh, ask for help. Uh, you know, particularly we're asking for help with our purpose. And mm -hmm. yes, that's what I wanted. Yeah. It's yeah. like, okay, so where am I supposed to be? What am I supposed to be doing? Uh, like I have all these questions and, and I have like, um, my home, um, my father passed away, uh, in, uh, May last year. Oh, I'm sorry. And yeah. And, um, anyways, he's left the home to me and my brother and like with everything that's happening, I don't feel like I should, like he wants to sell the home and, and go off and do his thing. And, um, I want to stay there. Like, I feel, I don't know. I, and that's the thing is I'm kind of torn. I don't know what I should do. And it's a pretty huge decision. And so I'd really like some guidance, <laughs> you know, Absolutely. Do you and, know to muscle test net. Um, are you familiar with that concept of muscle testing? Um, I, I know physically how to do that, but <laughs> right. physically muscle test, because when you get really good with muscle testing, you're just getting, you know, that wisdom from not only your body, but from your soul. And, uh, you know, when it's a huge decision, I don't like to start off with that is how I really learn or, or sharpen up my muscle testing. You know, you don't start off with, do I put everything I own into Bitcoin? Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> But, yeah. but, you know, easier, less loaded questions until you get really comfortable with it. And then that absolutely um, is something that you can ask about, you know, should I, should I consider staying in this home? You know, what would that, what would that look like? And just ask that series of questions uh, and get your, get your yes or no, get your yes or no answers. Um, yeah. Not. And how, like, see, that's, how do I know I'm hearing them? Like, I would think it would be pretty powerful or profound. There's, that It's a book called The Emotion Code uh, by Bradley Nelson. And that's what I learned. That's where I learned how to muscle test. There's different ways to do it. Um, there's three ways, there's more, but there's at least three ways I'm aware of. And one is, um, I'll show you the the most direct, quick, and easy way is you just take your uh, left thumb and left forefinger and put them together, form a circle, do the same with your right hand and put them together. The concept is when you ask a question where the answer is yes, you're not going to be able to pull them apart because it's the truth and the truth holds. So if I ask, is my name Wendy? Yes. I mean, I can't, I can't pull them apart. That's, that's literally legally my name. It's not Gwendolyn. That's not a nickname. My name is Wendy. And now if I ask, is my name Henley? That's my dog's name. No, <laughs> <laughs> it just, it doesn't hold. So it's something that you can learn how to do and just really trust that you're getting that wisdom, um, you know, from, depending if you're asking your higher self to answer your question, you're asking your guide, you know, whoever you yeah. to help you with the important questions. Um, I, I muscle tested a lot um, in, I moved a year ago and it was a big decision. Like you said, you know, stay or go. Uh, Cause you know, buying, buying out your brother, that's, that's a big decision um, from, from the house. And um, I had just so many questions about why I was uh, being asked to relocate and where I should be relocating to. Hi there, Sharon. And just everything around that. So I did a lot of muscle testing during that period. So mm. it really was and helpful. So your, your guides didn't help you with that? or Oh, they did. I mean, that's... Oh muscle testing to get that you know to get those yeses or no um around that oh, so, okay um, it's part of my my big decision with moving was i was uh looking at going tiny and i felt like that was a huge decision to be getting rid of 80 to 90 percent of what i owned and moving into 399 square feet and was i really meant to do that and was i really meant to um, move um, across the state so etc but anyway, so welcome, Sharon. Sharon, I'm so <laughs> glad you're here. Yes, um, thank you. I'm I'm so sorry. I thought this was on YouTube, so I wasn't. Was, it was okay. on YouTube, um, and then YouTube. I did a test with it yesterday, and it was not being kind to me at all. Oh, I didn't get it okay. Working. 
So I switched it to Zoom and then I was trying to get that information out to everybody, but I didn't know exactly who was coming. Right. Okay. Sharing, yeah. well, you know, I'm sharing. here now. Yeah. I was eating eating my dinner, so I apologize <laughs> for <laughs> Please don't apologize. Appreciate you taking your time and being here. And Margie's got her um sweet uh new dog with her. That's so nice. Fun. So, and Sharon, you're so welcome to to share. I don't know if you heard that I, I mentioned that you just released your first book on Friday. Yes, yes uh, my first book, 10 yeah. years in the making. So Thank you, Wendy. Share I, the title and just talk about. Um, well, I just happen to have a copy right here. It's called Awakened Soul, My Near-Death Journey Home Through Christ's Infinite Love. And uh, I had a near-death experience in 2001. And um, was met by Christ, and he took me to a water world uh, that I recognize as a home world. And then the, I mean, it just, I go and do, I've done interviews like Wendy has about hers, hers as well. And um, I go in a lot deeper into that experience and the aftermath where, where he and I work together to heal. <laughs> Lots of past life stuff. Lots of past life stuff. Yeah. And the journey is so amazing, Sharon, because the way you did that healing with sitting in meditation with him every mm -hmm. day at a set yeah. time is remarkable because just the diligence that it took to do that and then how you just uh, had so many things come up and healed uh, so many things is just amazing uh, so because i would, it was i made that commitment with him yeah definitely it's um so it was of course all worth it that was 20 something years ago <laughs> i think and i was not religious at all still not religious was not spiritual any of that so um right yeah. and i think that's what's so interesting is so many of us that <laughs> okay margie's getting the full the full uh, bath there <laughs> um but so many because this i i just i don't see spirituality as really having anything to do with religion right it's, you know so interesting um how these things that can come up because you know same thing for me when i had when i had my near-death experience um when i was 36 and I really was not especially religious. So to suddenly have my bathroom be filled with angels that were saving my life. I mean, I was like so bug eyed. I'm, I'm like amazed I was able to take any action at all because I was so busy staring at all of them. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, whoa, whoa, look, look, at, look at this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, yes, it's just, it's just incredible. But so congratulations on your book launch today. Well, thank you. Thank you. Um, I asked the astrologer to pick the date. I knew approximately when I thought it would be ready about six months ago. And I asked an astrologer, uh, Debbie Buss uh, in the UK, um, if she could help me pick the best date. And what she did was fascinating. She looked at Joe DiMaggio's date of birth and date of death and Marilyn Monroe's date of birth and date of death. And then she added in my birth date. And that was how she came up with 62424. Oh, wow. Really just like all, all sixes. Six, six, six. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Which is actually a sacred number. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. So, and I would never have thought to do that. So, you know, astrologers are just such um, smart people and just, you know, just such, so tuned in with things like that. So that's how, that's how the, the date um, came about. Yeah. So, well, it makes sense because uh, everything is numbers, right? The right. universe. Right. Nine, I believe what Tesla told us. Right. Universe right. is uh, equated to the number nine. Right. So many things do just, you know, break down to numbers. It's not just math and music. It's just those right. building building blocks of what, what energy is and what the universe is. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Makes sense. So, but again, uh, thank you uh, all so much for, for being here. And as I mentioned, um, you're welcome to be able to uh, download the book. 
um and that's saying yeah 369 um you can download 369 it. yep for the next uh for the next three days so today tomorrow and the next day for just 99 cents on kindle so all right yeah. let me just check my email and text one more time here of any uh people who got lost in the shuffle from uh youtube to zoom and just see if we've got anybody else that needs the link okay looks like we are doing great so one of the things that was so amazing uh, to me that came through with hearing Joe speak during all these sessions speak speak through me when the the hypnotherapist was helping me uh, raise my vibration and and have um, my higher self come through and there just was so many uh, changes in voice um, for those of you who. Mm -hmm. Um, looked at the book and so when I'm doing it as an audiobook I chose to read aloud the name of who's speaking because I thought you will be lost otherwise um, so I just I just chose to uh, read it that way but just his insights I thought were really profound around a lot of things um, because he had that good long life into his mid 80s and to get to hear his perspective from being at home on the other side and having having been at home healing for years but to hear him speak about um, you know what a soulmate really is and you know to get into that and the different types of soulmates because I think that's something that's pretty confused um, in pop culture right now and so many people are oh I have to meet the one and I only want to meet my soulmate mm -hmm. as a romantic partner and that's great, but be aware of what you're asking for. And I just want to say, buckle up for a ride. <laughs> because that's uh, likely what, what you're going to get. Because soulmates are so often, romantic soulmates are so often for lessons. So doesn't mean that, you know, that shouldn't be a relationship that you ask for and pursue. But I think because of like Hollywood and, and Disney kind of making this into like Jerry Maguire and you complete me. Well, who wants a half a person? Who wants to be a half a person? Um, don't we want to attract whole people? <laughs> Makes more, more sense to me versus, oh, you're my right. other half. You know, right. It's just it's just such an expression. You know, my other half, my better half. <laughs> Um, yeah. You know what I realized, Wendy, I'm sorry. Continue. Yeah. Is that once we are, once we find our connection with source, the, the rest follows, then, then, then we were vibrating to a much higher frequency. And that's what fulfills me is my connection to, to Christ, to source, not, you know, another person, right? Because we can't, because we always have other, we have our stuff, people have their stuff. Right. And so we can't, you know, we can't really f expect someone to fulfill us. Right. Because well, then we also, always get disappointed. <laughs> right. Right. Also, yeah. we can't, we can't expect people to give us our self-confidence or yes. our self-respect. I mean, the word mm -hmm. self is right there. That means we've got to right. be able to foster it and give it to ourselves. I think um, learning to love ourselves, there's, you know, nothing more important than that. And so many people are, you know, kind and loving and they're giving love to everyone but themselves. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's just, it's really, it's really interesting. And that was one of the things that was really hard for me to um let go of because joe was just having such trouble forgiving himself and it really that's why it took so many sessions and there you know just there were years in between mm -hmm. it's like it you know got done like i did one a month or whatever it was over over a period of of eight years of having those sessions and uh -huh and being able to write it and then edit it and re-edit <clears throat> it. Um, and the book also, it was a bit hard to birth. Uh, there were a fair number of uh, technical challenges that came up. 
and I really was uh, tearing my hair out and getting frustrated. And I just decided, okay, let's just turn this into the question. Why is this happening for me rather than why is this happening to me? Because I had to proofread it and proofread it again and proofread it again until I was cross-eyed. Multiple versions. It wasn't a normal process. No one's fault. It's just how it went down. And my guide said, because you were still completing the energy releases. That's why we drilled you so hard and why you had to proof it and proof it and proof it. And I, 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 I could feel them. I could feel them as I was rereading it and proofing it. Uh, so just very interesting, you know, when we can ask that question, why is this happening for me? <laughs> it just really, really can help. So, um, okay, looks like Kathy is connecting. So let's just get her here. Okay. And then Net has a question, soulmate versus soul contract. So what's the difference? Okay. So uh, my, my belief. Can I ask you just a, a little prelude? Um, Please. Because I heard you talk about the guy that you were with for a year. Yes. And, and then it didn't like, but I think you referred to it as a soul contract. And so, yeah. So that's what I was wondering. Is there like, because so sure. we have more than one soulmate. We have more than one soul contracts. And do we have soul contracts with friends? That type of thing. Absolutely. Great questions. Welcome, Anne. I'm so glad you're here. And welcome, Kathy. Uh, thank you for joining me. I so, so appreciate you being here. So we just had a great question come up about soulmates and soul contracts. So what, what I've been shown is we have multiple soulmates. There's different types of soulmates. There's friend soulmates. There's a supporter soulmates. There's simply people that we travel with many times and incarnate with many times and we're working on um it might be that we're working on lessons with them it might be it's for companionship and support you know this is different roles so romantic soulmates are a subset of soulmates because we have different types and my belief is and what i've seen again and again with so many clients is there's multiple soulmates so it's not that there's this one and only romantic soulmate for you um, but there are multiple multiple possibilities and opportunities and soul contracts i believe are the agreements that we make with other souls with other people before we incarnate and we say oh, I really want to work on forgiveness. I know I'm not especially great at forgiveness. It doesn't come that easily to me. I'd really like to get better at that. I know I can be too much in judgment and just get a, a chip on my shoulder and not be forgiving uh, easily enough. Because forgiveness, it's a path to freedom. It's freeing yourself up. It's It's a it's a gift to the other person, but it's much more a gift to you <laughs> versus, you know, having your nose out of joint, bearing that grudge, just being stuck in that place where you haven't been able to forgive. I so did because I chose that forgiveness was one of the things I wanted to work on this lifetime. Therefore, I had to arrange for some experiences that most people would consider pretty unforgivable. And I had to have a couple of those. So I have had them. I think most people have. Um, but as I said, some people just, you know, do better at just um, letting it go and just, you know, realizing, okay, you know, I I'm just going to free myself up and move on from this. Um, so um, I hope that, does that help answer the question, Net? Yeah. <clears throat> They kind of go hand in glove. Because so we have both. We have exactly. lots of soulmates and lots of soul contracts. Exactly. Exactly. Mm. And soul contracts can be changed. If a soul contract is not serving you in this lifetime, you absolutely have the right and the ability to uh, end a soul contract. For instance, if someone is being hurt and harmed and abused, something's gone wonky with 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 a soul contract you know if something is just not making sense 
Mm -hmm. uh, and I actually have a friend, guess what her job is at home. She's essentially someone who works in the Akashic Records, but she works specifically in the soul contract division. So she's like a type of a spiritual uh, attorney or lawyer. And she told me um, that the soul contracts have gotten pretty out of control. You know, they're very well intended. They made sense, but they're just, there's too many of them going on that don't make any sense anymore. Um, and so she, you know, walked me through, you should end a, a contract just like you would in in your, your 3D world. You know, if you've got a real estate contract with someone and it's just not working, or, or a marriage. I mean, a marriage is also a sacred contract. And if it is not working and it's meant to end, then it's called a divorce. You know, we end, we end that marriage contract. So, um, because uh, people can be, you know, in that place of thinking, oh, you know, I've got to stick through this through all eternity. Well, if it's destroying you, if it's hurting you, if it's harming you, no one wants that, you know, it's a lesson. <laughs> God want that. You know, the the universe doesn't want that. It just doesn't make sense. So I hope that I hope that helps um to, you know, because people can be really concerned about the word contract, like it's this yeah. forever. Yeah. So, but yeah, yeah, like marriage, right? But I, I actually heard when you were talking about forgiveness, um, it was Virginia Drake who said that um when when you need to forgive someone it's like there is a a tag on them and a tag on you and in my mind with the law of attraction and that kind of thing it will draw in more of that negativity so that negativity is not only attached to that person it's also attached to you so that's why they say that you get more out of forgiveness when you forgive someone because that negativity is released from you and it's also released from them, but Absolutely. more importantly from you. Right. So, you know, Absolutely. I mean, there yeah. literally can be a cord of attachment yeah. uh, that comes up pretty frequently um, in, in sessions when I'm working with people and we're doing energy healing sessions is there's, there's a cord of attachment um, that, that needs to be, needs to be cut. So we just work really respectfully with that other person's uh, higher self, as well as with their guides to see if there's anything they want to say, you know, before we just suddenly cut a cord. Yeah, uh, and that can throw people off. So you know, we want to, you know, anything that needs to be said, we just let that get communicated. So and that Ona, yeah. Ona, Pona, Ono, or whatever it is. Yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah. that's one of, um, I can never pronounce that correctly either. <laughs> Um, that beautiful uh, Hawaiian, uh, the forgiveness mm -hmm. practice. Mm -hmm. um, Ho'oponopono. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Thank you. I always get lost in there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. It'd be quite a while to be able to, to uh, pronounce it correctly. <laughs> Ho'oponopono. Yes. Yes. So Kathy, thank you so much for being here. Uh, any comments or questions? Um, does anyone have a specific question? question for um joe dimaggio with what what he learned uh in that in that lifetime and how he and i just got our got our, got our energy freed up um anything i can uh help with happy to comment on uh i'm not sure can you hear me yes i can okay um i i was a bit upset that he had um, hit Marion, Marilyn, you know that he that she forgave him, but he said that he had he had like hit her, mm -hmm. and I thought it was sad that um, they both wanted different things. Like he wanted her to be a little housewife, like his mother, right? The way he was raised, and um, she obviously wanted to be a movie star. She right. had that need because you know she'd been neglected as a as a kid and she had this dream of being loved by people and that's really what she absolutely. got absolutely yes so it's just a very um sad situation very sad. absolutely and i think i'm not condoning the behavior in any way uh, but i think he just he didn't have another model because he was born in the early 1900s right. and he just didn't know what to do 
with a wife that was meant to meant to be a star and just you know meant to be such a public figure yeah and yeah. he just wanted to you know take care of her and you know have her at home and um it just it just must have you know just reached this this um um pitch between the two of them where they just you know just didn't know what to do and he he um unfortunately you know struck out in in anger um so it was really hard to facilitate the session for the young woman um it's a young woman in in Europe who had these tremendous memories as Marilyn that came yeah. to referred to me it was really hard to just not be bawling um during the session when she yeah. talked about that and how much that hurt her um because I was just it's like I've got to keep it together for her this is her session you know I'll go off and cry later uh because I had some work to do for uh you know self-forgiveness from that but oh. just think about you know having struck your wife like that having struck your spouse it was just horrible to me um so it just was a really big deal when she said that she uh, forgave me and didn't didn't bear grudge yeah. and she just you know appreciated that um that I as Joe had understood her the best um of of her uh, three three husbands uh, two very very short marriages and then one was about five years so she she just had such a tumultuous life I think she was just such a courageous soul um, yeah. so many ways and there's just so many people that say oh I wish I was Marilyn Monroe it's like I'm not quite sure you know your Marilyn history <laughs> and she's still being used all these years after she died you know with her Mm -hmm. the things that she left for her um her acting coach mm -hmm. isn't it his his wife that um actually got the stuff and sold it for millions and millions of dollars and things like that mm -hmm. because joe would never have done that if she left the stuff to him you know he would have he would have cherished it i would think mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but do you feel his i mean what i would like to know is in that session when you were crying was that because you feel his emotions? Because I felt his emotions. Exactly. Exactly. And also just as a human being to hear that any spouse has struck another spouse. Right. I, I don't care because it, it can be on both sides. I, we're not. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you yeah. know, um, you know, so it just but it was it just was really, really um deep it was just a, a profound release when um she said that she um forgave me you know forgave yeah. me. it was just a really big deal um and i thought how brilliant of her how kind-hearted you know what what a fantastic mature individual she is um that she just she said i just i just need to let it go i just you know it's it's it just needs to be let go and i i don't I don't hate anyone, I think was the way she put it. I just, I just need to let it go. Um, but she also stood up for herself and she knew that, you know, the marriage couldn't continue um, at that time. So, you know, she, she ended it. Um, and I, sh I'm sure that wasn't easy to do. I'm sure she knew there was going to be such yeah. about it because they were, I mean, the press went wild when they got married because they were both so well known. But right. to have the two of them come together was just a really, a really big deal. So, like a golden couple. Yes, yes, exactly. And everybody, the pressure, happy yeah. ending. Everyone's so invested in it, um, you know, because they they want their own happy ending, and they're kind of like trying to live through that, you know, golden couple. So. Yeah. yeah yeah but um yeah just really really uh grateful um to to have it be have it be um just complete and to uh have have the book launched and uh i i feel a little bit like you ann tucker because ann you are one of the most incredibly productive people i know and ann never and ann never stopped she finishes one project and it's like whoop 
two more projects came in and <laughs> I'm feeling like that in a good way um, because the minute I finished this book, I suddenly found a way to do the audio book um, affordably. So my uh, co-host for Waking Up Spiritually for my podcast, um, he's got a music background and he's a sound, he's got sound engineering experience. So he's actually helping me create the audio book and I just hadn't known how to do that. And right. also my, my next book, is coming in uh, just fast and furious. And that was so clear and so obvious. I had my own past life regression session a couple weeks ago and Mary Magdalene came in and she mentioned her book um, that I'm writing, which is the next one. It's called Magdalene's Book of Love. And she said, the time is now. The time is now. <laughs> she repeated it three times. I'm like, oh, that doesn't take any interpretation at all. <laughs> I don't think she's someone you want to mess with, is she? No, no, no. I just want an ascended master system. I, I, it's just like I could hear it like go through like the galaxy when she was saying that. I thought, oh, wow. So I immediately uh, jumped on that and it's just I had a lot of flow to it. And I'm just feeling so grateful that I did choose to move to my tiny house because I just have so much more. Uh, time and energy uh, freed up with having made this change. Um, and my my guides, they they tease me. They're like, yeah, we've got you up in like the world's perfect little attic. So I don't know if you can tell, but I'm up in a loft. My hands, like that's my fingers, literally. <laughs> it's only uh, 55 inches tall. So it's like this perfect like little cocoon, but it's got two opening windows and the air conditioner and it's just perfect. So I've got my uh, creative space but it's like a cocoon it's like no one can find it it's like tucked away um, up in this this cool loft so I think it's the perfect uh, writing space for me and just the perfect place that I get to get to work with clients so really grateful for it your little studio recording studio yeah, yes yes exactly um and i didn't even have to do anything to it um i was so surprised because i thought maybe i'm gonna have to put acoustic panels in or you know do some things to make it be appropriate but i think because the ceiling is so low and there's carpet on the floor and it's just a small room so it's it's almost like a booth um so um yeah so greg and i just did some some tests with it um as i was recording i was like okay i just did the prologue um, you know, what do you think? Can you sound engineer it? And he sent it off. He's like, oh, it passed. He's like, yeah, rock and roll. And then we did the next chapter and he gave me some more specific feedback. Uh, like evidently I was uh, moving the mic back and forth from me and a couple other weird things. <laughs> uh, so we, we just, we're just getting it, getting it dialed in. Um, so it's just, I feel really, really uh, supported and just really fortunate. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you for being here. I appreciate you being here so much. And Anne, uh, thank you for taking the time. Um, ironically, when you when you texted me uh, that the link wasn't working, I was watching you on the Jeff Mara show. That's <laughs> <laughs> funny to see your text pop up. I'm like, oh, it's Anne Anne. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm so excited for you to get this book out, Wendy. I know it's just been in you for such a long time. It's, it's so exciting that it's now out being shared. Yes, exactly. It's just so great. And then, like I said, then when one thing gets done, as you know so well, then the next flows in so much more uh, easily. Um, and I looked back at the original uh, date of when I started uh, Magdalene's Book of Love. It's almost exactly, uh, it's like 10 years. This month is 10 years. Wow. So, and when she came through and said, the time is now, it's like, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, yep. Yeah, but um, just, yeah, just a great, great process. And I think the point is we're all so loved and supported and we just have to get out of our own darn way where we just uh, put up all these impediments of why we can't do things or the time's not right or I don't know how to do this. And if we're just willing to to try and to to take the steps, it just all, it just all flows in. So... All right. Um, so Kathy, just so you're aware, uh, you can purchase the book for 99 cents today and tomorrow and the next day. So okay. perfect. Hey, Wonderful. Wonderful. 
Okay, are there any other questions or any other comments or anything I can help with? Thank you again. Yes, Kathy. Could you, uh, could I ask about Mary Magdalene? Certainly. Because you know, I know she she's mentioned in the book, and I did enjoy the book. By the way, I did I did do a review. It was Thank hard for me to get my head around some of these like celebrity. Um, I know. You know, and Max I know struggle too. You, I know you did. That's why to me it seemed like you know, it's a genuine thing because she's she's thinking it's kind of crazy too. But um, with Mary Magdalene. You, I watched you channeling her on a, a show. I can't remember. Oh, I can't remember what show it was. Perhaps I watched you on a few different things. Okay, but she had said that she had had to marry John the Baptist. Mm -hmm. She was supposed to be, you know, marrying Jesus, and they'd known each other for years, mm -hmm. and that was arranged. And then instead, she was forced to marry John the Baptist. So that is actually what happened. That is actually what happened. I want to give that the caveat. That is my understanding. That is my belief. That's absolutely right. what comes through to me. Other people will have other memories because there's other timelines. Right. Because timelines repeat and other people can have different experiences. And I will spend this much time, zero <laughs> having any debates about that i just i just totally respect other people have other experiences and other memories but, but you will write that about that exactly. book. pardon you will write about it in the book yes yeah that is that is included in the book so in in summary what happened was the Jewish priests were just working really hard like okay what do we do we're, we're like we've got two prophets for God, which by the way, are first cousins. And we've got John the Baptist and we have uh, Yeshua ben Joseph and it, Yeshua just got so popular so quickly. They didn't know what to do with it. They weren't, they weren't comfortable with it. So they chose that, that John, they felt he was more manageable and like more, more slow and steady. And they preferred that versus this just wildfire that was going on with with yeshua so they they chose to marry off uh, mary magdalene to john because she was considered the princess of her people so she was 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 high born and so she became one of those um arranged marriages which sometimes are wonderful and sometimes are dreadful yeah, yeah. So that's, that's what happened. Mm. It just, it just broke her heart. It was not what she wanted to happen. And it was, it was just very difficult and very, um, you know, very unfortunate. Uh, yes, a, a wonderful child comes into the world as a result. But other than that, it was um, not, not the destiny she was looking for so yes that is detailed in the book and then how she is able to later um, marry Yeshua after an appropriate period of mourning after um, John the Baptist is is killed so there had to be a, a, a circumspect period of, of time so but that's that's what happened um, in in the timeline that that I'm familiar with um, and again, other people will have other other memories, and I I respect that. Mm -hmm. So, but thank you, excellent excellent question. All right, well, ladies, thank you again. I so appreciate you. Thank you for uh, helping me uh, celebrate. I just uh, really really appreciate getting to do this, and I had to buy some roses because. Joe um, purchased roses uh, once a week for Marilyn for more than 20 years um, after her death because she asked him to. It was very interesting. There was another um, Hollywood star um, who received received flowers and she said to Joe, if I die before you, it's really important that I have fresh flowers. Um, and those were actually some of the memories that I had was of buying the flowers 
when I was in LA because I didn't live in LA but when I was there in person I would buy the flowers and go to the mausoleum and I could remember walking down the street and doing that uh, to honor her and that was part of why she said she was able to forgive me because I'd honored her memory for so long uh, mm -hmm. in the exact way that she had asked and interestingly my first spiritual teacher her husband worked right on that street and he remembered seeing Joe DiMaggio walking by carrying those flowers. So when they say there's these, you know, five degrees of separation, I think there's much less. <laughs> it's just, you know, amazing how we, we can connect and have these, you know, misses and near misses and synchronicities. It's just, it's just crazy. Cause I'm thinking, wait a minute. That means you saw me. <laughs> yeah, the earlier me. But um, it just was really interesting that he had that memory and brought that up with me randomly one day. And my jaw was kind of on the floor. And I'm like, I remember doing that. <laughs> so so that's, that's why the roses. That's why the roses. So and that's why um my um my uh, uh shanda trophy who helped me with the book launch that's why she did so many of the the graphics with the roses i said the roses are really important and they're not they're not on the book cover we chose not to put them there and just keep it really really clean and simple but i said the roses are really symbolic and it's it's right in my middle name it's my yeah. middle name so it just you know just was part of that that energy coming forward so thank you all again I so appreciate you being here and thank you for uh, helping me uh, celebrate and, and have this moment so have a wonderful evening everybody see, see you, you next soon time. thank Bye -bye. you congratulations Bye -bye. thank you